So when you point at us, does that mean we're ready to go? Yeah, I don't say. I don't, I don't ever say the one. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's like TV. <laughs> right, but it needs something to kick in because you you have to say something to get it to start. Here, here's your clue. We're podcasting now. Okay, and we'll do the thing. <laughs> Technorama episode 371 for March 13th, 2013. Three laws of robotics? Pshaw. <laughs> Good morning, folks. This is your captain speaking. Technorama. Remember when? Check, check, check. Rama. On this day in tech history. Check, check. And now, the news. Check. What the chuck? Check, Rama. Welcome to Blockhead Video. Yeah, man, I'm looking for a sway bar link kid for a 71 Pinto. Over there, in the media corner. You know, somebody's going to tell us, you know, those, those Pintos don't have sway bars. Welcome to Technorama for March 13th, 2013. This is the show that takes a lighthearted look at tech, science, sci-fi, and all things geek. If this is your first time listening to Technorama, thank you for joining us. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. We appreciate you giving us your time. I'm Chuck Tomasi, sitting here with my lovely daughter, Julie, who is on spring break. And this is what she did for spring break from college. Couldn't go to the Bahamas or Florida or anything like that. Yeah, so no kidding. Did- Technorama instead. That's hardcore. What do nerds do when they're not in school? Also with me, <laughs> making snide remarks, is Craig Step. How are you, Craig? I'm good, man. I'm ready to get back at it because this seems like it's been forever. It's only been a couple of weeks. I know, but it just seems like... Well, it's you know, going to be on and off like that for a while yet because I've got some know. more business trips coming up. Yeah, but you know, the internet, it's like two weeks is like six months. Ah, yes. Computing time is not real time. (laughs) Yes, it's like dog time. It's exponential, too. Yeah. (laughs) That's true. One week off is... is Two weeks off is the square of one week off? Is that what you're saying? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. Wow. (laughs) All right, I'm going to try and get all this in here. Craig has overloaded our coming up in this episode. So I'm going to give you the long, drawn-out 60-second coming up in this episode. If there is no net force on an object, then its velocity is constant. The object is either at rest, if its velocity is equal to zero, or it moves with constant speed in a single direction. The show's going to be over by the time we get done with this part. (laughs) The acceleration of a body is parallel and directly proportional to the net force F acting on the body is in the direction of the net force and is inversely proportional to the mass M of the body. And finally, when a first body exerts a force on a second body, like this, the second <laughs> body simultaneously exerts a force on the first body. Oh, it works! How cool is that? <laughs> it worked. You're not watching the webcam, you're missing this. This means that force one and force two are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. None of this and more coming up right after this. Let me push you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. <laughs> we went opposite way. It was like one of those Newton's ladder no, things. It's a strange yeah. force. <laughs> May the force be with you. <laughs> nice. Wow, I actually got that into 60 seconds even with the yakking around. Okay. That was funny. Okay, should we get back to work? Yes. The schooner the better, as they say in sailing language. Hey, by the way, I told JT he should update his title to be JT Ukes at 50. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> yeah. Did you tell everybody we're broadcasting? Uh, uh, they we're should... on. Okay. Hey, everybody. By the way, we're rock broadcasting. We're rock broadcasting? I messed up, okay? We're broadcasting a little while ago. We started. Get with the game. <laughs> okay, here we go. We started broadcasting. Exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Forget it. I could not get mine to understand. Toll, one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> 
Toll one dollar. It worked fine when I'd say toll two dollars seventy five cents. It kept coming up as call O N E D O L L A R because I can text message into my expense report. Oh, I see. Thank you. And I could not get a toll dollar in one dollar. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, right. Google. <laughs> Let's go. Every week we do the show live on Google Plus Hangouts at 9.30 Eastern Time. Yes, even with the crazy time clock change thing, we know what time it is. It's Technorama time, Yay. and we want to see you there on the webcam. We can. You don't even need a Google Plus Hangout to, to do this. You just go to chuckchat.com forward slash webcam, and we will see you there. We uh, have a chat room going live. Craig is under some crazy alias. I think it's part of the Witness Protection Program. I'm not really sure what that's about. Where did you get that name? And chat one five. I'm actually using the program and chat. Android chat is what it's short for. Oh, pipe five five one zero two five. So that's why you're talking to your chat. Well, apparently my nick was deleted. Thanks, Gru. <laughs> <laughs> or, like I or, said, witness protection program. Yeah, Steve Rickyberg decided. No, he didn't decide anything. It was automatic. Apparently. We got Craig and Claudio M and Captain Rupier and me and Gru, Tim Elliott and ZML2008, and we want to see you there to join in the fun on Sunday night. Had to think there for a second because <laughs> traveling and coming home on the weird days gets me all screwed up. Hey, by the way, Gru says, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> you were never identified. He did it. He did it. It's number five. Hey, there goes that witness protection program thing again. <laughs> That's See? why they have a finger command on Unix. Yeah. We fingered Craig. <laughs> we fingered the whole thing out. That was that weird feeling. Happy <laughs> birthday! That reminds me we should go to the birthday calendar. <laughs> Turning to the birthday calendar, we have February. February. It's March now, Charles. March 13th, Johanna Gonzalez, a.k.a. Mighty Joe. March 14th is Pi Day. We'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a while. So tomorrow is Pi 314. Get it? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Sure. Okay. I think every geek has that now. Yeah. Uh, March 16th is Michelle Lopez, a.k.a. Country Science. Happy birthday, Michelle. Greg mm. Lemon on the 18th. He can be found at greglemon.com. Ding! I'm not fast enough to get that up. And uh, March 19th is JT Shea of the GigCast and JT Ukes at 40 in air quotes. <laughs> Yeah, I, we were saying that he like should update years. it. Yeah, he should update it to fifty by now. <laughs> it's, it's closer to fifty at this point. <laughs> and I want to give a shout out to Team Miners Elite on Minecraft. Uh, this is the son of one of my old friends that I had dinner with on Wednesday night down in Houston. We were talking, and he mentioned podcast, and I said, "I'll give you a shout out. What's your team name?" So he said, "Team Miners Elite." So Seth. Oh, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to use real names or not, but <laughs> oh well. Way to go! <laughs> and his brother Zach is now caught the programming bug because uh, he wanted to learn JavaScript. So I sent him over to CodeAcademy.com where he's learning that. And his mom said Zach has now written his first program. Sweet. So cool. he's he's turned to the dark side with the rest of us. Hey, by the way, I do want to issue a public apology to JT, who we were just speaking of. By the way, um, what you do now? <laughs> Well, we this last weekend or the weekend before, um, we were in Florida, and literally we passed by around within five miles of him, <laughs> and Oops. I didn't get to. Now you know I've known him for a while online. You know yep. he's a friend of the show. Uh, we've chatted a good bit. Um, so I've never really he met him. Posted in, a few times. Yes, and I, but I've never met him in Meet Space. So that was my chance. But uh, the fan, we it was running late. We were tired. And we're trying to get to uh, about an hour away from where he was at to the next place we were supposed to go for our vacation. And oops, it was just no way I could get, you know, get over there. So I, I apologize to him and, um, you know, I'll wash his car or something next time. <laughs> Actually, I think I offered to buy the first and second round next, you know, when I finally meet him. I'll buff the uke. Like, that sounds like a, that doesn't sound good at all. No, no, no. I think we'll edit yeah, that part out. Yeah, no. okay. <laughs> Buff the... There come euphemisms. <laughs> it's a metaphor for something. Is that what they call it? 
<laughs> uh, let's move right along. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be on the birthday calendar, go over to chuckchat.com forward slash wiki. Happy birthday to all of you who are on the calendar. And if you're not on the calendar, and it's your birthday anyway, happy birthday to you. Don't forget to join us every Sunday night at 9.30 Eastern. We tweet about it. We put a thing on the Facebook. So just watch us. And put a you know circle Technorama podcast. You'll find out when it is. Or you can even follow us on Facebook if you haven't done that. Thank you to everybody who has. That uh, page traffic is going very nicely. And have a lot of fun with the, the comments and feedback and things, crazy things we find during the week that end up over there. It's kind of like our show continues over there. That's right. Between mm -hmm. the audio and video, there's always that Facebook page, which is a running litany of nonsense. <laughs> running commentary? I thought that's what you were, where you're going with that. <laughs> On this day in history for March 13, 2013, this is the 72nd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. There are 293 days remaining in 2013. It was on this date in 1639 that Harvard College is named after the clergyman John Harvard. On March 13, 1781, William Herschel discovers Uranus and realizes it's only just behind him. <laughs> <laughs> It's Uranus. Remember, we had that discussion of how we're going to repronounce that? Oh, yeah. That yeah. same date in 1930, the news of the discovery of Pluto is telegraphed to the Harvard College Observatory. Good thing they built the college. Yeah. And Apollo 9 returned safely to Earth after testing the lunar module 44 years ago today. 22 years ago, the United States Department of Justin Justice announces that the Exxon, Val Exxon has agreed to pay $1 billion dollars for the cleanup of the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska. Hmm. And the Phoenix lights are seen over Phoenix. Imagine that. Arizona. <laughs> by, the way, by hundreds of people and millions of televisions on this date in 1997. Wouldn't that have been embarrassing if they had seen them over a different city? Albuquerque. <laughs> I can't spell Albuquerque. <laughs> yeah, send Phoenix. Them over Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, send them to Phoenix. Can't spell Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> And oh, the TV shows that have come out of that. Yeah. Ten years ago today, the journal Nature reports that 350,000-year-old footprints of an upright walking human have been found in Italy. Happy birthday goes on this day to Joseph Priestley. Wasn't he on Beverly Hills 90210? Oh, that was yeah. Jason Priestley. <laughs> yes, Jason. English scientist and minister born on this date in 1733. And also born on this date in 1764, Earl Grey Hot. I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Uh, he died in 1845. I knew we couldn't get away without a Jean-Luc Picard T reference in that line somewhere. Oh, no, United engaged. States Army Air Corps officer, balloonist, and aerial photographer Albert William Stevens was born today in 1886. And L. Ron Hubbard, American science fiction author and founder of the Scientology, was born 102 years ago. Wow. You made it through that one. The man... <laughs> for which O'Hare Airport is named. Pilot and Medal of Honor recipient Edward Butch O'Hare was born today in 1914. And co-founder of Comcast Communications, Ralph J. Roberts, return, returns. He returns to 93 today. <laughs> and finally, cartoonist, one of my favorite cartoonists, oh, Al Jaffe. Yes, I love him too. Turns 92. Awesome. And that's the way it was on this day in tech history, or other history, or any history you like. Alternate year. March 13th, 2013. That's my flag waving. <laughs> now Craig can try and sync up our singing to the actual music. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, we don't have to edit out any retakes. We actually got that all in one line. I'm a professional, what man. What do you expect? Do? What do? The cartoonist. Who? What did he do? Al Jaffe, yeah. Mad Magazine. Oh, okay. What is this? Got your soft? Good news, anyone? <laughs> Let me do that again. That one didn't make it on the track. What did I? Oh, this. <laughs> Good news, anyone? Hey, good news is... Well, it's actually bad news. I should have played one of the bad news clips. Uh, bad news, nobody. Bad news, nobody. <laughs> there, we can do that. Bad news, nobody. There. there we go. Much better. Um, are we died? No. Yes. It didn't die. It just had a uh, sore throat. It's, it's sore throat. It's taking a dirt nap. I was walking <laughs> through the family room, and I heard something going, click, click, 
<laughs> click, click. It was saying, click, play click. me, play me. Click, click. <laughs> and I opened up the entertainment center, and I'm like, that's the Wii making that noise. Oh, someone left a, a CD in there. So I ejected it, put it away, and told Julie. Later, she says, I want to go play Super Paper Mario. Puts in the thing, and nothing happens. Says, disc read error. Try a different disc. Disc mm -hmm. read error. Uh, try a different disc. Clean disc it off, error. try it again, flip it over, try it upside down, just in case. And then, <laughs> she said, nope, didn't work. And I got to use the line, did you try turning it off and on again? <laughs> Which <laughs> didn't work, but... Yeah. So we look up on the internet, and there's three types of main problems you can get with these. One is, obviously we tried, dirty DVD. Clean that off, didn't mm -hmm. work. We tried um, power cycling. It turns out it's a mechanical problem. After doing some diagnosis, we got to take lots of screws apart, uh, lots of screws out of the unit. Of different sizes and shapes. Yeah, lots, <laughs> some are Phillips and some are those tri-head things. Thank you very much, Craig, oh. for that birthday present with all eight bazillion of those screwdriver Finally. kits. Because I would <laughs> not have had a tri-point screwdriver had it not been for that kit. I need to order one of those for myself. Those are awesome. <laughs> it was great, yeah. <laughs> So I got it all done and looked online and said, you know what? It's actually the servo motor. The laser was working. The laser motor was working to move the laser back and forth. Okay, that's good. But the CD is not spinning at all. Ah, so okay. So the CD servo motor that spins the thing is dead. So I ordered another one for about 15 bucks, $2 shipping. Should be here this week, and we will continue the project and have an update for you in uh, next episode. Hmm, because, you know, uh, I'd hate for that laser not to move and... Only burn a hole in your face and not down a line or something. There's a hole clear through the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was paper, Mario. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, remember, tomorrow is pie day as this mm. comes out. What kind of pie are you getting, Chuck? I am going to have a fruit pie. I think I like the lemon pie. meringue or lime. I'm sorry, pie. key lime pie. Excuse me. Don't forget to get your stuff. We have uh, a link to some very funny stuff over at Geeks Are Sexy. There's a Pie Hard, which I saw that movie this last week in the latest Die Hard movie. <laughs> Not hard. much for story, but it's a lot of fun just to watch things blow up. Bruce Willis, you, typical movie. You did watch the movie. Okay, I got Yes, you. I did watch the movie. Yes. Yippee Pie Day is what the icon says. They also have Pie Pencils, which have all the digits on there. 3.145. Not all of the digits. Not, well... <laughs> All the ones that fit on the pencil, and yeah, a whole did, bunch more than you need. Julie how many, wasn't around. How many for digits did they say they get out there? We 39, just talked about this. Thirty-eight, huh? thirty-nine. No, how many? How many digits did they actually get? Oh, like, it is some ridiculous, like seventeen million. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's in the millions. <laughs> Ninety-six digits of pi on your pencil. It's hey, not the way, so important anymore. The, the accuracy. It's just kind of a race to see how far you can. Count. I just only, thought of this. Only, only, only Rain Man can actually recite the numbers. I'm a good driver. I just thought of this. The more you use this pencil, the worse your math will get, because yeah. as you sharpen it, the digits will disappear. <laughs> yeah. You get pretty close to have it affect you at all. <laughs> hey, I'm a, yeah. At NASA, they're going to go one day, oh, I got... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did we miss Pluto? Um, <laughs> I had to sharpen my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> only got eight digits, not 12. <laughs> we have a pie cuff bracelet, which I think is kind of cool. It's it just was a metal... one of those with the periodic table on it, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Neat. And one of my favorites, the pie pizza cutter. So underneath the legs of the pie symbol, it has the <laughs> wheels. So you can cut your pie with your pie. A pizza pie. Ooh. <laughs> there you go. Pie ice cubes, pie gift wrap, the 1,000 digits of pie print. Looks like the Matrix. Pie yeah, the, the wrapping paper. Oh my goodness. Pie mm. greeting cards. Mm, it says mm, pie. Pie cufflinks. You know what else would be kind of cool is like a pie towel rack where you hang up your towels on the back of the door. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Why Just not? Because it looks like a towel rack? It kind of does. <laughs> hey, you know what? We should do a hangout tomorrow at 3.15 in the afternoon. Uh, yeah. Just a really quick one. 3.15 and yeah. No, it's 60, not 3.15. No. The date is 3.14. And then at... I'm sorry. You can't have 15.92. That's not uh, a good... No, actually, we should do it at 3.16. So it would be 3.4 military time. 15.16. Oh, there... Well, it's not 16, though. The next two digits are 9.2. That doesn't work. <laughs> oh, whatever. Nobody can put a... There's a 9 on 15.92 hours. Right. We'll figure this out. <laughs> 
<laughs> by the time like it's too 50. late. We'll skip to the next minute so it's another so it's 90 <laughs> seconds. And, yeah. You know what I think? I think we need some mice brains because they're taking our brains and putting them in mice and making them smarter. So maybe it'll work the other way around. Injecting uh, mice with human brain smooth. cells actually makes them smarter. Smooth transition. Yeah. <laughs> We're not too smart so we can go to mice. Yeah. A scenario like Planet of the Apes might not be unrealistic as we think, but fortunately, or at least for right now, it seems like our future overlords will be far less threatening than Caesar and company. That's because scientists have discovered that injecting mice with human brain cells can actually make them smarter. Mm. All hail our hyper intelligence. You know, the first thing that I came to mind when I read this headline yep. was Pinky in the Brain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I thought of? Hitchhiker's God. What are we going to do tonight, brain? Same yeah. thing we do every night. Yeah. Remember Hitchhiker's Guide? The mice were actually in charge of everything. Oh, yeah. And, the <laughs> and way, they needed and the, his brain. It all yeah. the dolphins sense. took off. Thanks. Yeah. Well, the dolphins were the smartest thing around so here. So long and thanks for all the fish. Yeah. <laughs> the research team led by Stephen Goldman and neurobiologist Mike and Nid Nittergaard wanted to wanted to the test the importance, typo in there, of supporting non-neural brain cells called glia in information processing. Oh, I actually know what glia cells are because I used to listen to the brain, science, the brain podcast. <laughs> the brain podcast. With Ginger Campbell. Uh, in information processing. So they injected human progenitor glial cells into newborn mice, naturally. These progenitor cells are able to form all sorts of glial cells but for this case, the most important glial cell made by progenitors were cells called astrocytes. And suddenly, the rats of Nim come to mind, too. <laughs> this is just getting Nim. creepy. You ever read that story? Oh, yeah. A long time ago. Yeah, it was like third grade. <laughs> All animals have them, but the astrocytes, which sounds more like a video game, in human brains are vastly more complex than in other animals. And it's these astrocytes that put the human brain in a completely different league than those of a mouse, for example. Six months after the initial injection, the human glial cells had almost entirely replaced those of the mice. Our astrocytes had taken over, and it showed. The mice, with the boost of brain power, performed at a significantly higher level in mazes and other tasks than control mice. They outsourced the finding the cheese to other dumber mice. <laughs> and they also showed a much higher interest in celebrities <laughs> and reality TV and shows. And that's when their that's when their <laughs> intelligence dropped off. <laughs> hey, look, we're on a something. Oh, they're into celebrities. <laughs> they ran up to the computer and said, "What do you call this thing with the wire on it to move the cursor around?" <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Hello, human. Hello, human. I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling the ASPCA on you. <laughs> Quit grabbing me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need my hacks and strange stories. Lenny! Julie, can you get Lenny in here? I'll go get him. <laughs> hacks and strange stories! Now get out of here. <laughs> That's all we need him for is that now one get thing. Lost, you <laughs> we need Lenny for some more. All right, you've probably already heard the story about the little boy who bought $2,500 worth of in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, a five-year-old boy in the UK accidentally made 1,700 pounds or $2,550 of in-app purchases with a freemium game in just 15 minutes after asking his father to type in a password for the free download. <laughs> daddy, daddy. <gasps> yes. We did this story, didn't we, about the... I was very I sad. Down. Yes, he said I was worried, and I felt sad. I'm banned from the iPad yeah, now. Because as soon as you type in the password, it's it's really unlocked. For... You can actually change that to, so that everything, even upgrades, require a password every can you time. Know? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I talked to. So this is my question for you guys. I know we already covered this story, but it it, it made me think again. How, what would you do if you found your child had run up a significant bill? I mean, more than one or two ninety nine cent purchases. Well, I would have to wash the blood off my hands. <laughs> no. Hide the body. Um, yeah, <laughs> hide the body. Get a nice rug to. No. I yeah, don't know. But you, I mean, I'd be really angry, but I'm. You're not supposed to be angry because. Ah, uh, but. <laughs> if you could return those purchases within uh, a certain amount of time, well, within your can. 15 minutes, you know. 
uninstalled, you can get refunds for a lot of stuff. You can. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a setting in the app, in the in the general preferences under restrictions that says in-app purchases turn it on require password immediately, and that's how you can protect yourself. So parents, if you have children that are using your iOS devices, please set your restrictions on high. Well, you know it. You, well, it would be good advice to actually go in and look at what options there are for you. Yep. You know, just to be aware, for crying out loud, you know. Um, I don't really have to worry about that so much because Harris will come and ask me, um, can I can I get something? So, you know, then I have to put in my password. But I don't think he's going to go in and start downloading $15 million worth of <laughs> apps. Mm. What if he? Well, he could download the um, the bar exam, which I understand is about nine hundred dollars. You can download that. Yes. Wow. There's a hey, bar no, exam. I'd be impressed app. if he could pass it. <laughs> he better well pass it so he can pay back like, the. Hey, you downloaded it. <laughs> yeah. Fine, you you study it. <laughs> Guess what, son? You're now an attorney. <laughs> well, me and your mother are disappointed. <laughs> Don't. Do not let us down. <laughs> yeah. Do not disappoint me. Yeah. Join me, son. <laughs> so one thing I always wondered is, um, how do you get your hands on a Nobel Prize? Just eBay? Well, now apparently you can buy a Nobel Prize. Francis Crick, where do you know that name from? Um, Come on. Genetics. Yes, chemical engineering the lady. The helix, the double helix. Crick and Watson, uh, yes. right. Francis Crick, the guy who co-discovered the molecular structure of DNA back in 1953. Wait a minute. Now, if I sleep ago. funny, hey, if I sleep funny on my neck, I get a crick in my neck. <laughs> oh no, you get a double helix. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Along with James Watson, he won the Nobel Prize for groundbreaking scientific discovery, but his family now wants to get rid of it. According to the Heritage Auctions, bidding for the gold medal and diploma will start at a measly quarter million dollars. Isn't that the prize, the mo- amount of money he gets? Nobody has tried to sell a Nobel medal in 70 years. So the final prize will establish a new and interesting precedent hmm. as far as things go. I wonder who would buy that. ABC News reports on the motivations behind the sale. Crick's family said a portion of the proceeds would go to the Francis Crick Institute, scheduled to open in London in 2015. That makes sense. Hmm. The family said the new facility will be used in the search for cures for some of the world's most devastating diseases. Quote, this year marks the 60th anniversary of the historic discovery of the structures of DNA and 50 years have passed since Francis Crick was awarded the Nobel Prize, said Kendra Crick, a granddaughter of the scientist, in a statement from the auction house. Quote, for most of the time, the Nobel Prize and unique personal diploma have been locked up. By auctioning his Nobel, it will finally be made available to the public for public display and be well looked after. Our hope is that by having it available for display, it can be an inspiration to the next generation of scientists. Well, that the, makes sense. The auction yeah. is scheduled for April 10th in New York City. Also for sale is an endorsed check Dr. Crick received for $85,739.88 Swedish krona. And his old lab coat, which would be kind of How many of cool pesos though. is that? Pesos. <laughs> 85,000 Swedish krona. Go to Google. They'll tell you how to translate currency. So I just I'm go not... krona. Krona? K-R-O-N-A. It's kind of like the coffee. Oh, sorry, excuse me. I didn't mean to I'm not entirely sure if it's true because I read it on the internet. But I heard that in the early 1900s, um, along with the Nobel Prize, the standard Nobel Prize and like everything that goes along with it, um... So the person who won got a house right next to a brewery and unlimited bre- free beer on tap. Ooh, I'm going to put my Just name as, in. as a little um, incentive to become a scientist. <laughs> wow. Well, wouldn't that slow down the research? Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> enhance. <laughs> enhance. Yeah, it would yeah, enhance I, research. I'm doing beer research. Uh, <laughs> what the beer Nobel Prize. <laughs> Hmm. Or maybe, the Swedish krona. I or maybe it was it. the other scientists who paid for it so that they would have a chance when he dropped out. <laughs> yeah. From the yeah, he's an conspiracy. alcoholic. He's a raging alcoholic now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, it's good to see that they're they're looking they're forward looking rather than just trying to cash in on a something like that a medal, yeah. kind of prestigious medal. 
All right, Swedish krona, eighty-five thousand U.S. dollars <laughs> to Swedish krona is about half a million. Oh, I went the wrong you way. Went the wrong way. Just, okay, let's just move right. on. All right. It's, hey, the exchange rate's going to change by the end of the show anyway. Well, it's eighty-five to half a million Swedish krona. So the Swedish krona is lots more dollars. So it's not a whole lot of U.S. dollars. <laughs> not as many as you might think. I guess he didn't need the U.S. dollars. <laughs> I might Swedish. actually. I, I might put in a bid for that Nobel Prize. Won't bid. my parents be proud? <laughs> well, it starts at two. Yeah. <laughs> Two We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with the media corner. <laughs> I'm going to leave you to dress up that transition because I didn't have the thing ready. Break at 3109. That's close enough. Close enough. You'll find it. Here, we'll make it easy to find. Two quick Batman to the media corner. <sighs> Welcome to Blockhead Video. Hey, where can I find some good information about music and TV and videos and things? Over here, the media corner. In the media corner, we have 20 lies that Back to the Future told us, besides the hoverboard. That was obviously the easy target. Yes, besides the hoverboard. Okay, yeah. 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 I, I think it's safe to say we're not getting our hoverboards. Hey, actually, they do sell them. Despite the 2015 Back to the Future Part 2 showed us, it's 2013 and we can't even make a non-hovering replica of the hoverboard correctly. That's so things sad. that didn't work out include flying cars, which, you know, so I, I, by the way, Back to the Future did not lie to me. My, my teachers did. Did your teachers also think they were going to be flying cars? Yeah, that was the thing, you know. <laughs> oh, in the future, we'll have TVs that hang on walls. Okay, I'll give them that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but the, the flying cars thing, yeah, not so much. If you thought Avery Brooks was hostile about 10 years ago, where are the flying cars? <laughs> He's really going to be PO'd now. They do yeah. have flying cars. They're just not practical, like futons. Okay. Futons are not a very salad? good car. You're, they're not a very good plane. Futons are not a very good couch, not a very good bed. I have seen they're cars that are planes, but that's the no, another thing. We also have Mr. Fusion, which never came along. We just throw some garbage in a... Fusion processor. Now we just throw our garbage out. <laughs> the alpha rhythm generator. Since Marty was with his girlfriend Jennifer when Doc picked him up in uh, about to go to 2015, Jennifer got to tag along. And then she started asking questions, and then Doc zapped her with his sleep-inducing alpha rhythm generator, instantly rendering her unconscious. Hey, Doc, what'd you do? <laughs> Since this is pretty much a pocket date rape kit, it's probably for the best it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, number four, the weather service. Apparently the weather is on a strict schedule in 2015. Doc knows the exact time the pouring rain and Marty arrive in will stop. So, yeah, that would be nice. Oh, it's, it's 245. It's going to stop raining. I've got a tea time on. Yeah, it better uh, hurry up and... Clear up. Oh, there it goes. We don't have rejuvenation centers. We don't have power shoelaces, although we do have replicas of those shoes now. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have self-adjusting and self-drying jackets. We don't have the U.S. mail <laughs> fax service. Yeah, faxes are... <laughs> like so many films of the 80s that tried to peek into the future, Back to the Future 2 was convinced of the eternal viability of fax machines to the point that even public mailboxes have fax machines. But the faxes you need to send on the go. Wasn't it, um, didn't Marty's TV have a fax or was that just his briefcase? There was, yeah, there was like one in the living room. Yeah, papers flying, flying out of the TV. <laughs> Gas, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. <laughs> Gas Let me robots. Explain. I'm sorry. We don't have gas robots. We don't have holographic movie theaters. We don't have Pepsi Perfect. Hey, we do have Jaws 19. I'm just kidding. Mm. Jaws 19. <laughs> just about. Uh, we don't have suspended animation kennels or remote hovering news cameras. 
mobile trash cans. Wait, there was that movable trash can oh, yep. at Disney that moved around. I ah. think it was autonomous too, wasn't it? I'm uh, pretty sure. Maybe, yep. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the scenery channel, which I am really surprised this one hasn't come out yet. Actually, you know what? It might that exist is... somewhere. It is, yeah. Maybe. Hey, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue with that one because on Netflix, they had the fireplace. I could just turn it on for an hour. Right. Okay, this is yeah. like, show me, you know, the scenery from an Italian landscape. How yeah, would you but... put commercials in there? Just have people walk around and go, mm, hey, this is good Pepsi. It'll pop up like on YouTube, just show up at the bottom. <laughs> and... <over> it, yeah. <laughs> It'd be, I don't know. I think you could do nothing but product placement in there. Yeah, well. Alexis goes by. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have chiropractic hover belts, although we do have the tilt. Extra, what are oh, the, the, the inversion the, uh, tables. The, <laughs> we do have inversion Retractable indoor garden center. We don't have food hydrators. Ooh, Ooh. not sure. This how. pizza's soggy. <laughs> A little too much. <laughs> we don't have phone glasses, but <laughs> yeah, Google Glass is coming up soon. <laughs> oh, We're man. not too far off from that. And the Cubs will win a World Series. <laughs> we came close once. Yeah. So, Julie, what do you think about Google Glasses? By the way. Um, I haven't heard too much about them. Oh, I didn't how's know it they... going to work for people who already wear glasses? They ha they have a version that'll actually. You know what the Google glasses that you've seen? Yeah. Um, the computer part and the glass actually can take. You can take it off. So you can put it on different colored lenses or prescription oh, okay. glasses. Apparently, okay. Would I you just didn't know what the kids were saying nowadays about those things. Well, one of my friends is convinced that it's just a short step from, like, glasses is even better than laptops and tablets. It just keeps getting more and more um, convenient and portable, and contacts is the next thing for him. <laughs> yeah, well, Dr. Michio Kaku yeah. actually said that. I'm going to hold out for the smart contacts. <laughs> yep. But you know what? He, he is a teacher, and you know what? Uh, I've been lied to before by teachers. <laughs> say it isn't so. Just, just stating a fact. <laughs> just stating a fact there. You sound kind of bitter about those flying cars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I am. <laughs> oh, well. You have to wait for the cost to come down. Do we have lag or something? Cost. What? It seems maybe. like it, maybe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you do. I saw your mouth moving before your audio came over, too. Or that was really, really late. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Then hopefully we can finish up quickly. Uh, we have another list. Yeah. Ten most incompetent space captains of the universe. Because I just can't pass up a headline like that. Space is an unforgiving, unforgiving medium out there in the trackless depths. The slightest mistake can be fatal for everybody. And that goes a hundredfold for mistakes by commanding officers. A single mistake can mean death of hundreds, if not millions of people. And there are plenty of commanders and captains who have failed dramatically when they try to sit in the big chair. Number 10 is Salomar in Doctor Who's episode, The Planet of Evil, which I have to admit I haven't seen. That's quite an old one from the 70s. Number I nine, either, I have guess what? seen. I wanna, I, by the way, I do want to say that it, that looks like... Uh, one of those episodes of Star Trek where they had like Apollo or something, you know, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> this guy looks more like a Shakespearean pilot. <laughs> Number nine, yeah. Captain Grace from Farscape, which I have seen. And uh, you know, Lonnie Tupu finally pulled his character around towards the end, but you're right. He wasn't much of a, a captain. Uh, Number eight, Captain EO. Oh, <laughs> So, Did you ever see Captain EO? I never saw Captain EO. I did see that when we were at Disney, uh, when it was out. And it was neat in the way that the 3D and stuff was, but, you know, not a huge Michael Jackson think? fan, but, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Number seven, It was Captain like one of Michael those shows. And it was... It was like one of those shows, like 3D Terminator or something like that. You like, would have oh, it at okay. Disney World. So yeah. you would actually go and 
<laughs> you know, you would sit down in the chair, watch the show, and so it had Michael you know, Jackson. Type thing. <laughs> what else do you need? <laughs> Number seven, Captain Michael Jankowski from Babylon, Babylon Five. Number six, Ozil and Nita from Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back. Oh. Does Vader have to force choke this guy? Yes, yes, he does. The catalog of Ozil and Nita's mistakes in The Empire Strikes Back is fairly legendary. Among other things, the Imperial fleet drops out of hyperspace too close to Hoth, alerting the rebels to the Imperial attack too soon and losing the element of surprise. Later... Hey. Nita uh, lets Han wait, Solo lead hey, a Vader, very chase. Vader's thing. manager style. <laughs> hey, Vader's managing style was very motivating. Oh yes, very much so. Number five, the irresponsible <laughs> Captain Tyler. Uh, never saw that. Number four, Commander Barry Garner in Battlestar Galactica. Oh my. Number three, Commodore Matt Decker from Star Trek: The Doomsday Machine. Oh yeah, I think we can all agree with that one. Number two, <laughs> Captain Dallas yeah. from Alien. And, of course, at number one, Zap Brannigan from Futurama. Of course. I think we can all agree on that one. How could I have forgotten? <laughs> Give the fetch my slippers. Yeah. <sighs> yes, sir. The pink fuzzy ones. <laughs> All right, you and I have talked about data I'm hoarding. I'm feeling in the sussy past. today. Get the pink fuzzy ones. <laughs> you and I yes. have talked about data hoarding in the past, and uh, Wired Magazine spoke to uh, someone who I actually know, Chris Dancy, who likes to track his life to the nth degree. If you look at that little infographic that's on there, that's his actual Google Calendar from about a month Good. ago. Yes. <laughs> he has a. That's not appointments. That's just like data points when he gets email. He's, he's wearing sensors for his heart rate, and all this stuff goes somewhere. Excel mm -hmm. spreadsheet, Google Docs, Evernote, it just goes all over the place. Wow. Now, how much is too much, we have to ask? Well, first off, you know this guy, right? I do know this guy. Did they just fall off? I'm here. Oh, there you are. What is he trying to do? Who is this guy? I think our leg just caught up. Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah, that's much better. What does he do? He, he, he's been in IT for years and years. Now he's, he's kind of, I wouldn't put him on the same level as Robert Scoble, but he's kind of a, a marketing guy like that. Okay, all right. So anyway, so what's he trying to do here? It says at the moment he tracks everything he can, even if he doesn't seem if he doesn't see an immediate benefit, so long as it's relatively easy to collect, and he can save the data into Evernote, Google Calendar, or Excel. You never know when something seemingly pointless will come in handy in the future. This is a quote from him: "If I'm on a call and my voice gets over 50 decibels, my phone notifies me." He says. My heart rate after a conference call can usually give me a better insight into the call and my feelings about the call. Hmm. Okay. It's so. an interesting way to look at it. I mean, you could just look at it as he's being more observant than the average person. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> wow, that's uh, interesting. I mean, I bet his, the, pay, the load time on that page has got to be nuts. Oh, my gosh. Because <laughs> <laughs> all those he's elements... He's quoted as saying, if you can measure it, someone will. And that somebody should be you. <laughs> okay. How do you know this guy? Uh, I know him originally through, what was it, HDI? The, the... Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And, and he worked for us for a while. I was over at BMC. It says, uh, Dancy is connected to at least three sensors all day, every day. Sometimes it's as much as five. They measure his pulse, his REM sleep his skin temperature, and more. He also has sensors all over his house. There's even one in, his, uh, in the toilet so he can look for correlations between his bathroom habits and his sleep patterns. Okay, wow. I might, you know, I might find this interesting to do for a week or so. It sounds you know, like a lot of work. 
I was yeah. tracking what I ate and the exercise I was doing. You know, you saw my little form for that, and it actually helped mm -hmm. me lose some weight. Whoa, whoa, so, whoa. how much personal data logging is too much? <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly it. My Google Calendar didn't look anything like this. Oh, I goodness. would lose the real appointments in here. He probably yeah. hasn't color coded or something. Well, like that. I'd have to. Well, they are. Well, you can turn off all the calendars but the one you're hovering over or that's true. you know so you could look at your appointments and stuff and but to, to look at the data you could turn it back on I, yeah. and with with IFT IFTT IFFTT what IFTT you know, with, yes thank you um mm -hmm. you know there's you can actually send a lot of this stuff straight to your Google calendar so I can imagine it would be easy to do for a lot of things hey, I see these got Amazon purchases um I'm not sure about buffer updates, so I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> dog, I see like dog action or what was it? Um, well, you know, there's some things I'm you sure know. he's got to manually put in here. So that seems like a lot. What's the benefit to all the work? Well, like you said, you never know when seemingly meaningless data is going to come in handy later. Yeah. That's why I save my, I do save my receipts on Evernote though. I send more email between the hours of 9 and 10 than I do between 3 and 4. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it we still need to picture. make sure. <laughs> we need to make that reality show data hoarders, Craig. Yeah, right. Here's our first candidate <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah. I don't think data hoarding can actually Okay, okay, you do that. <laughs> This fall on A and E data hoarders. I dun, can't dun. get around my calendar. How can you live in this <laughs> in this mess? Oh my gosh, it's rot. There's rot and <laughs> yeah, I can see it now. I'm gonna die. Somebody's gonna have to go look at my personal data and go, what the? <laughs> There's a busy guy. Fall in there and die. <laughs> yeah, or at least those intelligent mice we were talking about earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That brings us to the end of the show. Boy, there's nothing like ending on a high note like that. If you like the show, there are many ways to show your love. Call the listener line, 206-222-2428, like somebody accidentally did this week and left an absolutely null message. Please don't do that. Right. Leave something yeah. meaningful. You know, in that 30 to 60 range would be wonderful. We'd love to hear I mean, from you. you at least also... breathe hard. <laughs> <laughs> Say something we... cryptic. We can wonder about it. Yeah, <laughs> Encode right. your messages. <laughs> <laughs> Call us and say something in PGP. <laughs> PHP. No, PGP, not PHP. I did I didn't say PHP. Oh, they said PHP. Yeah. What about peaches? <laughs> <laughs> also, you can like us on Facebook, circle us on Google Plus, all those other things are all available over at the site. And again, join us Sunday night, 9 30 Eastern. You can even go to the website and say, hey, watch us live, and it'll take you right to that page. Craig made that cool new icon a few weeks ago. We'd love to see you there. Thank you. It's Go use it. It's time that I thank everybody for their uh, tip jar donations also. Those micropayments are really helping out. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. You know who you are. And uh, just here's a virtual pat on the back and a handshake to thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Can't thank say it enough. Up. There you go. In the webcam. Yeah. Don't break your arm. <laughs> oh, also want to give a thank you to Mad Marv, who keeps our blog going during the week. He finds a bunch of good stories there. Some of it is what we see on Facebook. Some of it's not. You're going to have to figure it out. Subscribe to all that good stuff and have it automatically delivered to you. Thanks to everybody who sent us links during the week. We included a couple of those in the show. Thank you very much. Keep them coming. Technorama at chuckchat.com is where you want to send those. Thanks to everybody who joined us in the Hangout. Really appreciate that, too. And thank you, most of all, for downloading and listening to this show. This show is a proud member of Friends in Tech. You can find out more at friendsintech.com. We're also affiliated with great shows over at Farpoint Media. Go check them out. Until next time, tell a friend about Technorama. And as always, give me a binary high five. One, zero, one. Wait, that was just a big one. Happy Pi Day. <laughs> Pi. I'm going to give my gang sign. One, zero, one. <laughs> Wait, wasn't it? All right. Say goodnight, everybody. <laughs> Good night.